the matter of the people of the state of California versus Orenthal James Simpson, case number BA09. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. And we're off. And recording. <laughs> so, we'll go ahead and kick things off. Welcome to Doom to Fail, the podcast where we cover things that are doomed to fail, whether true crime or historical. I'm Fars, joined by Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Hi, Fars. I have my axe. My handy that, axe from last week. Oh my god, I was laughing. I just I, I listened to it and I was laughing about it again when I was trying to do my like outro and you're like itching your face with a freaking axe and I'm like, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you'll doing never, that. you'll never learn. Um, I'll never learn. Um, so I, I, um, I, you know, it's funny. I, uh, I told, I just told Taylor that my family was in town visiting this weekend, which was like incredibly stressful and borderline nightmarish and completely hellish. And I'm definitely not relaxed and not ready for the week. But in addition to that, it was actually my high school 20 year reunion this last weekend. Did you go? Um, no, because my parents were here. <laughs> oh, right, right. And, you, and you're from, wait, Dallas. are you from Dallas? Oh no, I'm you're in Austin. I'm I back live in Austin. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I, I live in Austin, reunions in Dallas and you know, like when I saw a couple of pictures start trickling in on social media, I was like, oh man, I need to set a reminder for myself for like 10 years to go to like the 30 year reunion. reunion. And then I, I saw like all these other pictures getting uploaded and I was like, I will, I'm so glad I didn't go. <laughs> like, oh my God. Everybody... I had the exact same experience because I'm two years older than you, but they just did mine because my 20 year reunion was like during COVID. So they moved it. And then like, I saw pictures go in and I was like, oh, why, why didn't I get invited? And then I, then I remembered that I blocked the Facebook group about it because I didn't want to get invited. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, right. I chose not to do that. And then also, I didn't know half the f- fucking people there. I was like, I don't know who people are. I mean, that was the so, thing. I was, looking at, I was looking at the pictures. I was like, I was like I'm, so I'm so bad at names. I'm so bad at faces. Like, I, there's so many people that I would run into, like conferences. I'm like, I know your face. I'm, I think we met. I have no idea where. I have no idea when. I don't know your name. I don't know who you work for. I'm looking at these pictures. I'm like, I recognize a lot of them, but I'm like, man, like a lot of them I don't recognize. And what do you do? You just walk up and say, uh, oh, uh, also, I used to go by Farmars. I used to go by my full name. And now I go by Fars. And it's like, hey, I'm Fars, uh, Farmars. And it's like, I don't I think they know. You know who you are. Like, yeah, I know. But, but I know. I, like, yeah. Also, I don't really want to like hang out with any of these people. <laughs> I know. I feel like the it was fun when it was a mystery. Like I know my dad. Like when he went to his like ten year high school reunion, there was a guy that he was good friends with who was dead. You know, like he didn't know because like you didn't know because it was the eighties. You know, but now, all right, I mean, I, I talk to who I want to talk to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> created like, my friendships from high school. <laughs> and this whole experience is weekend my family being here and just fucking annoying the shit out of me. <laughs> It just reminds me, like, dude, I don't have to spend time with people I don't want to fucking spend time with. Like, I've earned 100%. the right to be like, dude, I'm going to fucking check out and do my own thing. And I'm it's I'm within my rights to do that. So It's also like during the pandemic when I blocked a bunch of my cousins on Facebook because they were being ridiculous and embarrassing. And then one of my cousins was like, my, saw my mom the other day. And he was like, so Taylor blocked me. And she's like, well, Taylor has strong opinions. And I'm like, yeah, a strong opinion is he's fucking dumb. And I'm a grown up. I don't have to know him. He's exactly. not a friend. Exactly. Like yeah. we're allowed we're allowed to do that. Like it's okay to do that. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, yeah, like that was the, that was literally the experience I had of this weekend and now this talking through here. But okay. we can go ahead and dive right in and start chattering away. Taylor, right. who goes first today? You do, I believe. Cool. I think I have a relatively straightforward and short one because okay. my topic is not very well covered despite being relatively recent so oh, i'll go ahead and why don't you tell me what you're drinking i can dive right in yeah let me just make sure you go first i think you do because the last thing we did was yeah let's do it was the axe murders um i did not think of a drink i forgot i'm gonna say ice water <laughs> nice and healthy stay hydrated you know yeah lots of ice water cold 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 water Lovely, lovely ice water. Awesome. Oh, what? Oh, shit. But it's in a bad way. I didn't do the thing you told me to do. Oh, that's fine. I want to talk about it because I didn't like it. So we'll talk about it in a minute. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, so bypass that. Okay. Yeah. My drink is going to be bloody vodka because we're going to the motherland again of Russia. Is that like a Bloody Mary with or like just vodka with like literal blood in it? <laughs> 
I mean, it would be better if you have literal blood, preferably the blood of, like, a very old man that you can, like, okay. pour in. But if you totally. don't, you can also make a Bloody Mary. Sweet. Get some clamato juice. Which I, which I enjoy. You do love you do love that. So, yeah. you know, you as we already learned, you stole my whole idea, given that it's October, to do, like, a mm -hmm. Halloween theme. I try, to, I try to steal your ideas whenever possible. I know. I know. But yeah. this guy is actually more Batman-themed than Halloween-themed. Amazing. I'm going to be covering a guy whose name I would assume you would know, Taylor. His name is Alexander Pachushkin. I think so. Keep going. He's also known as the chessboard killer. Ooh, that's exciting. I feel like maybe I know a little bit, but not a ton. So tell me more. So I looked up the Batman universe and in the DC pantheons, there is a gang known as the Chessmen. Okay. They operate in Gotham and the Narrows, which I don't know what the Narrows are, but it comes up a lot in the Batman movies. Sure. And and the way that they communicate with each other is they give each other different chess or different colored squares. Uh -huh. And then each member can only go a certain direction, kind of like a chess Ooh. piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they're like, hey, Bill, here's your square. And Bill can only go diagonal. So he just has to run diagonal to get to the next crime, crime spot. Ooh. That's the whole idea between behind the chess men. Got and it. that's how you evade authority. So that was I, I'd heard like the chessboard killer, and I was like, that's kind of cute. This one's this story's not that cute though. It's a lot less cute than that than than the DC universe. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't sound cute when you put the word killer at the end of it unless it's like a puppy. The puppy killer? No, no, not the puppy killer. Like this puppy's <laughs> named killer. He's a puppy, but get it because he's a puppy. No, I, I, that, that was on me. I said that the wrong. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, That's the only I time will... the word "killer" is cute is if you name your puppy "killer." Continue. Got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> I heard it the other way around. Don't kill puppies. Go. Nobody kill puppies. So, yeah. Alex, I'm gonna refer to him as Alex. So he was known as a chessboard killer because he was super good at chess, and because he wanted to kill as many people as there were squares on a chessboard. How many squares were on a chessboard, Taylor? Pop quiz. 26. 45. 64. 64. I have no idea. Um, I thought you were going to say maybe he only wanted to kill, like, kings and queens and knights. Because that'd be fun. That would be fun. That would be a little cuter, I think. Yeah. No, he killed He killed elderly old men. Oh, so that's cute. That's not cute. Not cute. This is getting less cute the more we talk about it. I know. I know. That's, that's the case of all my stories. <laughs> I... I was trying to research if this guy's actually good at chess. So there's a there's a rating system in chess called the ELO rating. And so a really good chess player, like an exceptional chess player, is going to be like a 2,000. A pretty mm -hmm. good chess player is 1,700. By all accounts, like what people were saying about this guy, this is relatively recent history, is that he was ranking somewhere around a 1,200, which was like a little bit better than a beginner. So he was okay. okay. Like he would beat a great. lot of people, but he wasn't like a chess master. And all he would do is just play retired old men, not retired, homeless old men who are kind of retired, I guess, in the park. Yeah, we say that just in the park. Can we say that yeah. like homeless men are also retired? Yeah, they're not working. There you go. All right, there we go. So he was playing sure. retired men. That sure. was the way he usually got his practice in. So regardless, as I said, his goal was to kill 64 people, which is the number of squares on a chessboard. Later yeah. on. People would argue that his motives had more to do with another incredibly famous serial killer in Russia called Andrei Chikatilo, saying uh -huh, that, that he wanted to, yeah, saying he wanted to, like, basically, Andrei got caught the year this guy got started killing, and so mm -hmm. he, like, came up with him in his, like, it was a common thing in Russia to talk about this guy. Yeah. He, like, beat him so handedly. Like, Andrei killed eight people in total. Mm -hmm. This guy, by the time he was caught, had killed 49 that they know of. Whoa. But it was like, it was actually like probably closer to 60 that he actually killed. Hey, so pretty close. He's, yeah, he like actually almost achieved his dream, which is kind of laudable in a lot of ways. Wow. <laughs> so the doom to fell part here is that I'm lying when I say this, but can we just blame chess on this? Something happens to your brain when you get really good at chess, I think. I mean, look at the Fisher guy who turned into an insane... it's opposite? Like, what? a weird type of person is really good at chess? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Damn, like, you killed causation, my theory. Correlation? 
Okay, fine. There's no Doom to Fail component here because Taylor just killed the theory. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just having a conversation. And are you mad also because you d didn't finish taking chess classes with those kids? <laughs> okay, so long story short, when I was living in LA, I went and took like a chess class because I was trying to get really good at chess. And I went to Santa Monica. I took a chess class. It was free. And I walked in and they were like, okay, your first task is you're going to play this like fucking toddler. This like, n n okay, not a toddler. He was like maybe like seven years old. Okay, it was a seven year old kid. This kid. Like, he, he wasn't even paying attention when I moved. Like, he would just come, do a move, he'd run around, like, jump him and down, and then he'd have, like, a snack pack, and then he'd come back and do another move. And then he beat me in, like, four <laughs> moves. He was, like, crazy. I was, like, <laughs> he was playing, like, four games at the same time. It was, like, crazy. Oh, my God. So anyways, funny. Yes, I'm upset that my chess career never panned out, unfortunately. Yeah. So, let's, let's, we'll move on. We'll move on from this. So, getting into the life of Alex. So, he was born in Moscow in 1974. This oh. is during the USSR, USSR era of Russia, where poverty and being completely destitute was basically a way of life. Mm -hmm. In his childhood, he was apparently pretty outgoing and sociable as a child until when he was four years old. He was on a park swing. He mm. fell backwards on the swing. When he came up, the swing it <gasps> smacked him hard in the head. It doesn't sound like it should have been that bad, but by all accounts, it was just, like, really, really bad. But by all accounts, his personality, like, changed that day from this, like, precocious, outgoing child to, like, someone who's very introverted and kind of hostile to people, which I don't... That always happens. Does it? Do you so always have many, a thing So here? many serial killers have head injuries when they're kids. Yeah. Like, 90% yeah. of them do. Um, and it's crazy how, like, your brain is, you know so it's kind of important fragile you know like you like you, like shake one piece up and you like kind of forget you forget how to read you know or like yeah. so what they were saying was because he was four years old they were like okay so if this had happened when he was like closer to like his 18th birthday nothing would have gone wrong because exactly because his skull would have been so hard at the front like adults skulls are like super hard apparently and yeah so... your skull is like in a lot of pieces when you're a baby it's like a tectonic plate stop Putting your axe in your head. I feel like I'm also worried because your axe is no longer in your bedroom. So now what are you going to do? How am I going to protect myself? Yeah. I'll throw Luna at the intruders. <laughs> if I can take the um, but yeah, you know how babies have a soft spot on their head? Do you remember that? Yeah, it's the middle, right? Babies? Yeah, because their heads aren't fully to get out. Their head has to squish a little bit so it can get out of that hole. And so, yeah, so it doesn't get fully hard until later, which makes sense that hitting your head when you're a kid can really fuck you up. So we're 13 or 14, Alex left his mother's home and went to live with his grand grandmother and grandfather. Most of it sounds like the mom just wasn't, like, able to cope with having a kid that's, like, probably has a little bit of autism, mostly, it sounds like. And the grandparents were fucking awesome. This is, like, one of those rare cases where, like, the upbringing of this kid was, like, great. Like, his grandfather was like, hey, we need to, like, basically, the mom put him in, like, a remedial school for, like, kids with learning disabilities. And... Mm -hmm. All they would do is, like, try to teach them how to be, quote, unquote, normal. And Alex's grandpa was like, no, there's nothing – you are the way you are. There's nothing wrong with the way you are. We're not going to try and keep trying to change you to be, like, this version of yourself that you're never going to be. We're just going to try and find and accentuate the better qualities that you could have if you were given the opportunity to do so. And so That's this nice. is how he – yeah, this is how he got into chess. So the grandfather would take him to this park next to their house – and teach him chess and then have him play with other people and like it just like it gave him that outlet it gave him a thing to do that he became really good mm -hmm. at so that was basically it he would play chess with these like old elderly men he played chess with his grandpa and that would be what would occupy his time when he wasn't in school and apparently this kind of diminished his hostile behavior and his like outwardly in introverted uh nature and so around like a, a little bit around 18 years old his grandfather died of natural causes and mm -hmm. this basically sent him spiraling because like think about this kid was like he basically had nobody for like all this time and then he finally found this elder guy who's like really nice to him and and, and loves him and then he goes away and he ends up dying and so alex would still play chess in the park but mm -hmm. he would also supplement that with something new that happened as his grandfather died so there are two things that came came along which actually sound like pretty common russian pastimes the first one was he was started drinking a shitload of vodka. He was always drinking vodka, which feels customary. And the second thing, which also feels kind of customary, 
is he would film himself basically assaulting children. So there's like one Ooh. story I read where he held a kid by his like legs outside of a window saying he's going to drop him. And like, that sounds like what Putin does like recreationally. That's fair. I don't feel like that's a Russian stereotype <laughs> as much as vodka is. Okay. Got but it. Got it. <laughs> I do, but sure. I'm overgeneralizing perhaps a little <laughs> bit. Just a smidge of overgeneralization. <sighs> so in July of 1992, when Alex is 18 years old, he arranged to meet a classmate named Mikkel. And I can't really pronounce his last name, so I'm just going to leave it at Mikkel. And they were supposed right. to be in the park where Alex would play chess. And when they got together, Alex basically told Mikkel, hey, I have this idea. I'm going to kill 64 people. Alex basically was like uncomfortable and was like, this is like, what, what, I thought we were looking at leaves. Like, why, why are you talking about this? Yeah, Mikkel so, was uncomfortable. Yeah, and so again, yeah. Alex strikes me as someone with like a version of autism or something. He basically interpreted Mikhail's like reticence to get involved in his like let's murder 64 people plan as him making fun of him and laughing at him. Mm. And so Alex got mad and strangled Mikhail and threw his body into a ditch. He went home to his mother's house, which was right down the street. Witnesses placed Mikhail with Alex that night, so police immediately questioned him. But there was no direct evidence. It was just like people saying, "Hey, like I saw them walking into the woods." Like there was no, does it? Like I mean, also it's like Russia. It's like Russia right after the USSR collapsed. Like they're not going to like be that diligent, anyways, right? The other shit going on. There's other shit going on. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to figure out how they're going to survive. Yeah, where they're going to get toilet paper tomorrow. So yeah, it's cold. At this point, Alex takes a long break between killings. It isn't well understood exactly like a how long a break that he took or why he ended up taking such a long break. Some well, things. Go ahead. Sorry. Can I speculate before you say something? Yes. It sounds like he didn't mean he didn't plan to do the first one that day, right? Yeah, yeah, he wasn't planning to, planning to do it. He just like flew off the handle. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe maybe like it, it's like it was accidental murder. He got his itch scratched, and that was it. It could be that. Yeah. Yeah. But some actually think that there wasn't that long of a break. So there's some oh. speculation that Alex was in love with a girl named Olga. And mm-hmm. Olga had a boyfriend who, like, threw himself off a building. So we know that this boyfriend threw himself oh. off a building. And then we we know that Alex knew a girl named Olga that lived in their building together. And some argue that Alex is the one who basically coaxed the guy up there and threw him off the building. That but is. we don't know for sure. It's kind mm-hmm. of like an unsubstantiated death. But yeah. it's worth noting that Alex never had any romantic partners that we know of. Nor okay. express any sexual interest in men or women. Okay. So my bet is that Olga's boyfriend killed himself and had nothing yeah. to Alex. That's my guess. Yeah. So I'm going to go into like a little bit of a side thing here. Have you okay. heard of a thing called the Council of Europe? No. Okay, I haven't either. So it's kind of like the UN, but for like European countries only. But it's not like the EU because it has no governing power like the EU has. It's basically like a recommendation thing it's like a mm-hmm. it's like a prestigious thing you join you make recommendations maybe the un listens to you maybe the eu listens to you but the council of europe has no enforcement capabilities on its own but regardless like i mentioned just now this is like right after the collapse of the ussr and so russia is trying desperately to figure out like its place and position in the entire global community and so mm-hmm. one thing that their president really wanted to do was join the council of europe And this is in 1996. And in 1996, a prerequisite of joining the Council of Europe was the abolition of the death penalty. And so, yeah. So the theory was, one of the theories is that Alex stopped killing. Or, yeah, sorry. Alex took a break. And then when the Council of Europe formed, and or sorry, the the, uh, Russia started applying to the the Council of Europe and the death penalty was uh, out of contention for him that's when he started wanting to kill again Mm. that's one theory but the other theory is by an fbi report where it said that basically serial killers typically take long cooling off periods either because a new outlet is discovered that replaces the act of killing Mm -hmm. or the circumstances that cause the stress which result in killing go away Mm -hmm. or to your point taylor it could have been an accident it was an accident and he was like he was like hey remember that idea i had forever ago maybe i should go back to that I hate, I mean, like, I, I'm I'm not, I'm against the death penalty because, you know, s- there are people who are not guilty who, you know, get it and, and all of those things. But I think it's such a, such a dick move when a killer is like, oh, please don't kill me. Fuck you. I know. I know. You know, like, oh, you don't want to die because what, you're afraid of death? You just killed people. 
Yeah, that's funny because I actually came Suck. up with Andre Chikatilo. Where, Andre yeah, Chikatilo he... where he was like, he was like, oh, please, like, spare my life, spare my life. Like, it was, it was like, oh, so you know what the value of life is, which is like exactly. crazy. Yeah, yo. Yeah, really gross. So we don't totally know what happened in this time period between him killing Mikhail and when I'm going to talk about his next round of crime sprees. All we really know is that at this time, he'd moved back in with his mother and his sister in a two-bedroom Soviet-era apartment where the living room is also a bedroom. Mm -hmm. And his job was to stack shelves at a local supermarket. So I doubt the stressors had been removed. And that's yeah. why he stopped. Yeah. It's such a weird life. Like, I was thinking about this. I was like, what kind of life is that? Like, God, you're like 30 years old and you live in a fucking – or at this point, you're 27 years old and you live in, like, a tiny little dingy apartment and – you probably mm -hmm. eat borscht all the time. Mm -hmm. Potatoes, a lot of potatoes. I mean, they, don't, they probably don't even have fried pickles. Probably not. Or ranch. Don't even have, probably don't even have that today. Probably don't even have that today. I know. So if you want to become rich, start a pro fried pickle franchise in Russia. Ooh. So, Lighten the mood a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, everybody loves fried pickles. Everybody calm down. Here's some fried pickles. <laughs> far as this fried pickles it writes itself Ooh, i like it um so on to the next crime street spree and the next round of murders ended up happening okay it's kind of shitty to say but a ton of the details around who these people were outside of their names and manner of death is a little bit obfuscated the reason being that they were mostly just old homeless men so nobody gave, gave a fuck about them anyways also Sucks. this is russia right right after the soviet union like i said earlier like things weren't good back then. Yeah. Like, things were really, really bad because they collapsed because they had no money. So the ruble mm -hmm. collapsed and they're trying to figure mm -hmm. out how they can, like, sustain themselves as a country. Mm -hmm. What we really know is that his standard method of trying to find people was to convince some poor, unsuspecting, and super vulnerable, vulnerable person to drink vodka with him in the park and then bash them in the skull repeatedly with either the vodka bottle or a hammer and then he had a habit of, like, shoving the bottle into the hole that he created in their skull, like, into Ew. their brains to oh, ensure man. they were dead. Like, it was, it, was kind of, it was kind of intense. Yeah, yuck. His first victim, this is in 2020, or sorry, this is in 2001. So we went from 1992 from Mikhail to 2001. Mm -hmm. This guy was a 52-year-old homeless man named Evgeny Pronin. And he was one of the guys that he would play chess with in the park. That's one common thing with Alex's crimes that he kind of sort of knew all of them. Huh. Like he had some relation with them, even if it was something as simple as playing chess in the park with them. Mm -hmm. What he told Evgeny was that that day was the anniversary of his dog's death, which is true, and to come visit his burial spot with him deep into the woods. And Evgeny obliged. He goes, yeah, let's go have a drink to your dog. It was sad. It was like, huh. he like, he, like, made a toast for his dog on behalf of his dog. You know, he was trying to be, like, very, very supportive and stuff. And yeah. they had a drink. In the middle of this, Alex attacked him with a vodka bottle, beat him to death, threw his body in, in the in the <gasps> ditch. Yikes. And this is the thing. This happens so many times. There's so many murders. And all of them kind of follow this MO. And like I said before, most of these people nobody gave a fuck about. So all we know is, yeah. like, the, their names. And so... I'll, I'll just summarize the, the remaining part of this mostly, which is like over the span of 52 months, he killed 33 people that we know of. Wow. So he killed these two. So we're at 35 right now. And first off, that's a lot of people to kill in 52 months. Like that yeah. feels like you're kind of going nuts a little bit. It's he exhausting. attacked another three that we know of that ultimately ended up surviving. We know that because he reported him to the police and nobody gave a shit, but I'll get into that here wow. in a moment. One of the three that he attacked was a girlfriend of one of his, I don't want to call, call him a friend. It's more like just an associate, this guy named Sergey. Mm -hmm. This girl was named Marina Marichiba. She was 19 years old and she was pregnant with Sergey's child when Alex ran into her at a train station in Moscow. You look like you're going to say something. No, I'm just frowning because that sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You haven't even told me how she dies, but it sucks. Keep going. Yeah, she's not going to die, thankfully. So, oh, spoiler yeah. So Maria was distraught over a fight that she'd had with Sergey. Alex ran into her and he was thinking pretty quickly and realized that even in Russia, trying to convince a pregnant woman to come to the park to have drinks with you probably wasn't going to work out very well. And so what he told her instead was he had some expensive camera equipment in the park that he wanted help moving. If she helped him, he would give her half the equipment so that she could sell them and be financially 
relieve the pressure with being a pregnant single woman, basically. That makes no sense, but yes, sure. I mean, it's I guess in 2001, were cameras common? Yes. I mean, that's a good question. I, do, I did go to, I studied abroad in 2002, and I got all of my pictures developed. So it wasn't like a digital camera, but like also, why would you have your, why would your stuff just be like sitting in the park? <laughs> Take better care of it. <laughs> if the story doesn't make sense... Yeah, it's not true. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Jack and the Giant Beanstalks. Why are they magic? It makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> so, oops, let me mute that. So Maria agreed and went with him to the park. And obviously, there was no camera equipment in the park. Instead, yeah. Alex tell, takes the manhole cover off the thing, saying that hey, the cameras are inside this manhole cover, which also makes even less sense than them being in the park. <laughs> And, no, they're not. They are not. <laughs> and he he asked Maria to put like come close to help him grab it. As she gets closer, he grabs her head and starts <gasps> bashing into the side of this manhole co- the opening of the manhole cover. Oh my god! It happens quite a bit to the point where she consciously, well, she was still conscious. She consciously decides that it's better to go into the hole than it is to stay up there with him. So she like throws Sorry. herself bloodied and battered into this hole because he can't get her anymore, or unless he like goes down there, but. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so she does that. And at this time, it's winter time, So she, she's wearing thick, you know, clothing. And so she starts getting sucked under into the water, into the current. Wow. So she thinking incredibly quickly, faster than I would probably think in this moment, she ended up getting naked so that she could yeah. actually like wait up. And she did. That's she ended hard. up getting pushed out to a different part of the underground tunnels that make up the sewer system, which Holy is like shit. so fucking scary. Like it's so yeah. terrifying to me. And she get, grabs a hold somehow of a ladder and starts climbing a ladder to another manhole cover. Apparently, she the la- manhole covers weigh about 90 pounds. And so she kept trying to push this manhole cover up, and it wouldn't budge. Well, it budged enough to where some woman saw it and then <gasps> screams and runs and grabs two security guards. They come back, and they remove the manhole cover off her. Wow. That's am- I have chills. I have chills. That's amazing. Good yeah. for her. Very, very, very fortunate woman. Wow. So she's taken to the hospital and police come to the hospital room and they question her and ask what she's been up to. What's she, up? How, how was your day? <laughs> hey, we found all this, uh, all this clothing that's just soaking in the lunch? sewer. Yeah. Um, but she immediately names Alex as the perpetrator because, again, her boyfriend was friends with Alex or acquaintances, whatever you want to call him. This is like a weird thing I didn't know, but apparently back during this time, if you wanted to live in like a really cool hip populist part of russia you had to get like special permission to live there you had to get like special papers that allowed you to live there uh-huh. so in this case maria came from a rural family in a rural part mm-hmm. of russia and so she didn't have any paper she actually immigrated in, in there illegally for economic activity and opportunity obviously yeah the, the cop as she's in the hospital bloodied and bandaged asked her for papers and maria's mm-hmm. like I don't have my papers. Yeah. And the cop goes, look, we can either track this thing down and you can be basically deported to your own rural village or you can let this go and we'll just call it a day. Jesus. Yeah. Sucks. I'm sure that happens all the fucking time. Yeah. Yeah. And so obviously she was like, I don't, I want to stay where I'm at. And so she didn't say anything and, or she she said nothing happened. The cop was like, cool, then let's all go about our day. And so that's what. She's still alive. How's she doing? Is she better? I bet she's still alive. I mean, she was 19 in 2002, so... Oh, yeah, she's, like, yeah. she's our age. Yeah. She's my age. Oh, yeah, she's wow. Great. We should try and find her. I know, we should. Keep going. So, I say this with this emboldened Alex, but in his mind, Maria was dead because he just saw her body float away in the underwater sewer. But it yeah. did validate him on two things that would come in handy later. One is he can kill someone who's not a homeless man and get away with it. Mm-hmm. Two... He doesn't need to stick with his vodka slash dead dog story to convince people to go with him. He can actually improvise. So he, he gave him a lot of confidence in this. So, oh. like I mentioned before, by this time, uh, he was living in this two-bedroom apartment. Mom, sister, him. Sounds like absolute fucking trash. Like, I can't imagine how anybody lives like that. And it actually gets surprisingly worse because Alex has another sister who had uh-huh. just gotten married. And then the husband and the additional sister move in to the... Actual one bedroom, bedroom. Oh. yeah, 
Yeah, so so now it's Alex, a sister, and a mom living in the bedroom slash living room. That sounds terrible. I had four people here in my like four bedroom house, and I, I know, like, how do people do this? <laughs> I was like, how do people do this? Like, I can't, I can't imagine. <laughs> so again, not a stress free environment, not great. The one time that his modus operandi basically changed and his victim profile really changed outside of Maria was when he, it was actually the time he ended up getting caught. So this was when he approached a lovely 36 year old woman named Marina Muscaloyova. Mm -hmm. Nailed that shit. And Marina like immediately got creepy vibes off Alex, but you know, she's like single, had a kid, was like, cool, I'll go hang out with this guy. Let's see what he's about. And so she ended up going out with Alex one night and they ended up taking a stroll to the park. Marie, Marina wow. had had enough creepy vibes to where she'd given it, the, the, the reports differ. Some say she gave her son. Some say she gave a friend uh, mm-hmm. Alex's name and phone number so that mm-hmm. in case anything goes wrong, somebody would know. Yeah. And obviously something went wrong. He beat the shit out of her. He shoved the vodka bottle into her brain mm-hmm. cavity that he left open. And that's actually how police discovered her in on June fourteenth of two thousand six. Oh my god! Yeah. So on her body, police found a metro ticket which traced her back to a railway station in Moscow, which is where her and Alex were seen on surveillance camera boarding a boarding a train. So they knew wow. something was going on with this. They ended up questioning Alex, and they say he admitted to the crime, but I think they probably beat the shit out of him most likely yeah. probably both maybe a little bit of both because because later on like when i explain where alex ended up getting sent after spoiler alert getting convicted Good. they also opened an investigation on them because there was like 190 cases where people confessed to crimes where which was like out of the size of the number of people that were being arrested was like way outside the norm and they concluded that they were being the shit out of these people and that's the only way they were getting confessions mm-hmm. out of them mm-hmm. so I, I bet alex was was beat up but it was all true like it wasn't like you know he probably he might not have confessed on his own but he did do it because what he ended up leading every all the cops to the bodies that he left over the ones that didn't end up in the sewer he took yeah. them directly to them so wow. it was obvious he did this yeah he, he explained that a, he did it for the chessboard reason, which is like the nerdiest thing in the world. But the other yeah, thing so. was he basically just felt powerless. He felt like a powerless yeah. nothing. And he was like, like, this made me feel – it's like the whole holding a kid out of a window and saying I can kill you at any time. Like, it's yeah, just yeah. power. Like, it's all, that's all it comes yeah. from. And that's basically what he wanted. He said he made, it made him feel like he's their father being able to, like, kill them whenever he wanted to. And so mm-hmm. that was basically what he what, – what, what drove him to commit his crimes – uh, he was convicted on 49 counts of murder and three counts of attempted murder. And again, at this time, there's no death penalty. There's still no death penalty in Russia. This was like <laughs> crazy how many people just randomly die there. He was he was sentenced to life imprisonment uh, along with 15 years of solitary confinement. Oh my god. He he again just like Andrei Chikatilo also like appealed this over and over again, saying this is unfair, which is like. You did it. Like, Ooh. we know you did it. You took them to you, the body. <laughs> you terribly murdered people. Like, I don't, I mean, there's a little bit of like, yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't think, yeah. We know you, you're a bad guy. We know you're a bad guy. He ended up getting Ooh. sent to a super cute called na- named place. So he got sent to Polar Owl. Oh, that is cute. Which is a penal colony. I left the penal colony part out. You're supposed to say Polar Owl penal colony, but I said, right. I thought if I just said Polar Owl, you think it's really cute. And, and that again, means, and that means gulag, which is bad. Basically, yeah. So yeah, essentially that. And like, and this is, I looked up the list of prisoners at Polar Owl. It is a who's who of absolute fucking maniacs. It's like the, it's like the prison that they kept Magneto in, in X-Men. Yeah, like it's, it, it's it like, their, like their version of like Alcatraz. It, it sounds terrifying. Like so many people there, I just run through the roster: Russian soda killer, Russian soda killer, spree killer. Like it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. one after the other. And so he's there; he's still alive; he's still in prison. Um, he's not that he old. He's only forty nine. Yeah, he's not that old. So he <laughs> there was like some quotes I read that was like, again, it gives you a sense of what his life was like outside. Like he was so thrilled at the prospect of having hot water in prison. Like he uh. talked about it. He was talking about how he asked like. Sometimes he even has to like dilute it with cold water because the water is so hot. Because I guess he just didn't have access to it when he was free, yeah. and it's like that impressive to have hot water. 
So oh, he's he's living his best life. I, I mean, I'm kind of jealous of the guy. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's not great in there, but also, yeah. It probably wasn't great out of there either. Exactly. Exactly. What's really, what's really interesting is like, like with like with so many of these other guys, there's a lot of facts out about them. This guy, there's really not that much out there. Yeah. Which I think might have something to do with the fact that like the Soviet Union w- was there and then collapsed, and people just memories. I don't know. I, there's so many they other also- things that people were focused on. Well, it doesn't sound like they were looking for him at all. Yeah, they also weren't looking for him. Well, so it was it was also, like, so this apartment complex that they lived in, everybody kind of knew each other, right? And so yeah. there was t- chatter at the apartment complex of something's going on because 10 of the people he killed, they were his neighbors. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so, so there like... was some talk about, like, hey, there's something weird going on. Like, we don't know what, but... yeah. Um, yeah. Also, it made me think of like, dude, he's a stock clerk. Like, can you imagine going to your locally gro- local grocery store and like it's your stock clerk that's like dumping bodies left and right? I mean, I'm sure that I've like talked to people who kill people, right? There's no way I haven't. Whether it's like at the store or like on the bus, like I don't know. Is there so, what's that some stat that says that the average person will in their lifetime interact with four serial killers? I don't know, but maybe. There's some sad about like that. But luckily we haven't yet. Or if we have, we don't know it. Yikes. Yeah. Well, that's awful. That's it. That's the chessboard kill. That's Alex Pichushkin. Pichush, Pichushkin. And, uh, and yeah, the doom to fail part, I don't know what it is exactly. I think it's probably just don't play chess. No, I don't think that's it. But go ahead. <laughs> just don't just avoid chess. Just, just a little jealous. A little jealous of that kid. Yeah, I should figure out what that kid's name was. He's probably so famous right now. <laughs> he was an Indian kid. Little, like he, little rich he, kid. It's really he good. Run, he would run to a sippy cup and then come back and just <laughs> fucking smoke me. You got to learn when you're young, I feel like. What was my joke? I, I made a hilarious joke because I was leaving. I was like, I was like, whatever, kid. At least I can drive. You know? Like, you can't <laughs> even do that. Yeah, fuck you, dude. Fuck you, child who's good at chess. Yeah. Whose parents care for him and brought him to this place. Faster. Um, so well, that was awful. That's my lovely story. This is my lovely axe. And oh. uh yeah. Uh let us know if you are a fan of Alex Petrushkin or not. I don't think you will be a fan necessarily. Most people should not be fans of Alex Petrushkin. Awesome. Well, thank you, Fars. Um thanks to everyone who is a new listener um we have a whole bunch of people almost we're almost at a thousand followers on instagram which is very exciting and thanks to everyone who is listening please like and share and send it to your friends if you have any questions or ideas or any feedback email us at doomed to at gmail.com and find us on social media at doomed to fill pod do we have any listener mail today nope damn come on people right in Oh, I have something, actually. September, our friend from Instagram, sent us some fun stories about haunted lakes. So I'm going to look at those. They were cool. So it was fun. Thank you, September. Sweet. Yeah. Next series. Awesome. Okay, well, go ahead and cut this off, and we'll join y'all on Wednesday. See you soon. Bye, all.